Hello fellow sim racers, today I'm taking a look at the brand new Spirit of Le Mans DLC for Project Cast 2. Slightly Mad Studios have included a bumper selection of Le Mans favourites old and new. The Spirit of Le Mans pack contains nine cars that are synonymous with a legendary endurance race, as well as a new track representing the Circuit de la Sarthe as it appeared in 1971. As for the cars, SMS have delivered us a Porsche 917 Longtail, Ferrari 512s in both 1970 and 1971 flavours, the pretty rare Porsche 924 Carrera, the ultra rare Porsche 961 and four 2016 LMP1 hybrid cars, the Toyota TS050, the Porsche 919 and the Audi R18 in high and low downforce configurations. Not a bad haul by any means. So, with so much to cover, I'm going to split this video into two parts, with this video taking a look at the 1971 themed content included in the Spirit of Le Mans pack. So, if you want to know about the modern Le Mans prototype cars, as well as the Porsche 924 and 961, you should check out my other video by clicking the link that's just appeared on your screen. Much of the content in the Spirit of Le Mans DLC focuses on the years 1970 and 1971, and there are a couple of good reasons for this. First of all, 1970 marked the first of Porsche's 19 overall wins at the 24 hours, and its first win with the iconic 917K. Secondly, after 1971, the circuit was altered significantly between Arnage and the Forge Chicane. And finally, there is the small matter of a motion picture by a bloke called Steve. If we take a look at the map of the 1971 circuit as featured in this mod, you can see that the run from Arnage all the way down to the Ford Chicane is pretty much flat out, save for a small lift at Maison Blanche. This section was replaced in 72 with what is now the complex including the Porsche and Corvette curves. The 71 layout also differs from the modern representation in Project Cars 2 at Dunlop and the Molson Strait, both of which are sans chicane, while Molson Corner and Turche Rouge both have a tighter profile in the 1971 layout. SMS have done a fantastic job with the track itself, which captures the feel of the era very well indeed. Obviously, the track couldn't be laser scanned without the help of a DeLorean, but the version represented in this mod feels pretty good to me. That being said, I did notice that my lap times were a little quicker than Jackie Oliver's record lap of 3 minutes 13.6, set in the 917LH, but I'll leave you to draw your own conclusions as to whether this is due to the track, the cars, or both. One detail that did catch me out was the divider between the start finish straight and the pit lane. Having recently rewatched the Le Mans movie, which was filmed in 1970, I was pretty convinced that SMS had made an error by including the divider. However, it would seem that the Armco divider was installed in late 1970, and photos of the 71 race show it very much in position, so kudos to SMS for nailing this detail. An ever-present bone of contention many have with Project Cars 2 relates to track limit penalties. Sadly, the 71 Le Mans circuit also suffers from overzealous cut detection. However, it must be said that it's nowhere near as bad as on the modern circuit, which won't allow you to drive on the racing line in several places. A final note before we move on, I would argue that Project Cars 2's greatest strength is its ability to evoke the feeling of a time and place, and this track is an excellent example of that. The place is absolutely packed with well-observed period details, and combined with Project Cars 2's excellent weather and lighting dynamics, this track is a real treat to drive. Moving on from the track, let's take a look at the Porsche 917 LH. So, Project Cars 2 fans should already be familiar with the 917K, which was introduced in the previous Porsche Pack DLC. The 917LH, or Langheck, is the low drag cousin of the 917K, and this long tail variant is more suited to the high speeds of circuits like Le Mans. In fact, in both qualifying and race trim, the LH was quicker than its short tail counterpart, but ultimately the 917K took the spoils in both 70 and 71. Now, I'll be totally honest with you, I've not been a fan of the way the 917K handles. The Project Cars 2 representation is remarkably docile, which doesn't really make a lot of sense for a beastly 600 brake horsepower prototype with 1970s tyres. So I wasn't all that surprised to find that the 917LH shares this trait. But let's not dwell on the negatives, there are plenty of things to like about this car. First and foremost, it looks spectacular. SMS have done a fantastic job with the model and the textures. Next up, it goes like poop off a garden tool. Let me tell you, 240 miles an hour over the crest at the end of the Mulsanne is a pretty eye-opening experience, particularly in the dark. 
And as you would expect, braking distances are pretty long, especially at those speeds. I found the 917K to be quite understeery, and the 917LH is even more so. So managing weight transfer in this car is absolutely critical if you want any hope of getting the front end to do as it's told. But while the front end requires quite a bit of work to keep it in check, the rear seems to have almost endless grip. You can jump on the throttle as hard as you like and there will be no ill consequences. Ending on a positive note, force feedback is excellent, as is the case with the rest of the cars in this pack. This is definitely an area that SMS has worked hard on and they now seem to be getting it right pretty much all the time. The curvaceous Ferrari 512S was Porsche's main rival at Le Mans in 1970, while the following year the weapon of choice was the boxy looking 512M. It's probably worth mentioning that the two cars are not short and long tail variants as some refer to them, the 512M being an updated aerodynamic package introduced late in 1970 and used at both high and low downforce circuits. Taking a look at the 512S first, and from a handling perspective it has a lot in common with the 917LH. The front end requires a lot of work, while the back end is just a little bit too planted and stable for my liking. Top speeds are a little bit lower than the mighty Porsches as you would expect, but it does appear to be a little bit better on the brakes and a bit more planted through faster corners. Comparatively, the 512M is a different beast entirely, and I mean that quite literally. The Ferrari 512M feels like a completely different car. It feels almost modern by comparison. It's considerably better on the brakes than the 512S and it has much, much more grip through the corners. From a handling perspective, the difference is night and day. Curiously, the car is an incredible 20 miles an hour slower in a straight line than its predecessor, which does seem a little counterintuitive to me. Both of the 512s are exquisitely modelled as you can see from the video, and frankly, even though I have a few concerns about their rather tame handling, I'm just happy that I get to drive these legendary cars on a period correct Le Mans layout. Overall, the 71 sports cars look, feel and sound great for the most part. However, I can't get past how forgiving these cars are to drive. But, looking at the big picture, SMS have managed to achieve something that very few sim racing titles do, and that is to produce a set of cars and tracks that are evocative of a time and place. The aptly named Spirit of Le Mans pack does a great job of facilitating fun, nostalgia fueled racing, and ultimately I think that's what SMS have set out to do. Sure, the pack has its flaws, and arguably fixating on the Porsche-Ferrari rivalry in 71 misses some of the flavour of the time. I for one would love to have seen a Lola, Matra or Chevron included in the pack in place of one of the many LMP variants, or the random 80s Porsches, but I understand that the pack is designed to have a broad appeal. So that about wraps things up for part one of this video. If you're interested in checking out the more modern content in the spirit of Le Mans pack, then I've put a link in the video description. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did then it would be great if you could hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you've got any suggestions for content you'd like to see on the channel in future then please let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for donating your precious free time by watching, it is very much appreciated. So all that's left to say is goodbye, thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.